Hi everyone, today I'm just going to do another retrosynthesis. This is pitched at a sort of early undergraduate level. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Right then, so I'm going to list the functional groups I have to deal with. I have an alcohol on the left hand side, I have a cis alkene, there's an ester, and I'm going to label this ring at the bottom altogether. This is a cyclohexene. That can be quite useful in a retrosynthetic analysis. So to keep my retrosynthesis convergent, I really should be aiming to cut this molecule up in the middle. So that will be dealing with either the cis alkene or the ester first. And my preferred disconnection would be to deal with the cis alkene. They're not the most stable isomer of an alkene and are potentially a reactive thing to carry around, potentially isomerizing when I don't want them to. So I can make a cis alkene from an alkyne by doing a functional group into conversion to the alkyne because I can do a partial reduction of an alkyne by hydrogenation using a Lindlar catalyst. That's a poison catalyst, and it's a metal surface that can only really absorb the triple bonds with its increased electron density and deliver hydrogen to it. But alkenes don't stick so effectively to the surface itself. So that prevents the reduction of any alkenes that are in the flask. Now to deal with that ester, I could cut off here, a normal CO ester disconnection. That will take me back to, well, just the acid chloride. And what we have to watch out for here is that there are two hydroxyl groups. And unfortunately, the primary alcohol will be more reactive than the secondary alcohol for the acid chloride because it's less hindered. So that means we're going to need to install the protecting group at this position. I'm just going to use a silyl ether here. They're my favorite type of protecting group. A TBS ether will give you some nice singlets in the proton NMR to keep track of that group. The nice thing about those singlets is they'll be down near zero ppm, so out of the way of other things. At this point, I want to consider breaking up the molecule into two bits because I notice that alkynes are generally good nucleophiles and I could fire that nucleophile into an aldehyde across here. So that will take me back down to this alkyne, and I'm going to need to deprotonate this proton on the end. That should be easy enough. That's pK about 25. That's because the anion will be left in an sp hybrid orbital, it has 50% s character, so quite a low energy orbital. So the conjugate base is more stable than maybe you'd expect for a carbon-based negative charge. The other component will be this aldehyde. So just looking at the alkyne first, I'll note that there's a 1,2 oxygen motif. So this is a 1,2 difunctionalized compound. A good way to disconnect these is to use epoxides. And that allows us to see how to go with this. I can disconnect back to the epoxide and just acetylene, where I can deprotonate one of those hydrogens, fire it into the epoxide, and then TBS protect at the end. So I'll use TBS chloride. That will complete that fragment. Now just dealing with the aldehyde. Now a really good way of making cyclohexenes is to use the diels older reaction. It's a pericyclic cycloaddition. But unfortunately, a diels older won't work here. That's because I'd need to go back to having a dienophile in this position, so a CC double bond there, but I need an electron withdrawing group immediately adjacent to it. But this aldehyde is too far away. So I'm going to do a functional group into conversion here that's maybe not a particularly obvious one. I'm going to do what's called a homologation reaction, and that's where I'm going to take out a CH2 group in my disconnection because I have a cunning way of putting that in later. That will take me back to this aldehyde which is now perfect for a diels older type disconnection. I can make this one from crotonaldehyde, which is this one. And specifically, I need the trans version of this to get the anti-stereochemistry. And I can just react that directly with butadiene. So this is a diels older disconnection that I can use, and I can just heat it to go backwards. Now, I've just taken a side to explain the homologation step. I'll just take a generic aldehyde like this one. And what I'm going to do first is react it with an ilid and specifically this one here with the OME group attached. Now this will do a Wittig reaction, and it'll give me the cis alkene most likely. That OME group is not doing a lot to stabilize the ilid. In fact, the electron-rich oxygen is probably not helping stability there, so it's more likely an unstabilized ilid. Although the stereochemistry doesn't really matter, because the next thing I'm going to do is react it with aqueous acid. That will supply a proton to take me to this oxycarbenium ion, which can be attacked by water and the resulting hemiacetal will collapse down into the aldehyde. So what we've done in this transformation is we've added a CH2. That's what's known as a methylene group in organic chemistry. Now, if you're thinking about using this trick, we're going to need to know how to make that ilid. But that's not so bad. We can just use the usual techniques. Starting off with this chloride, we could do a substitution reaction with triphenylphosphine to give me this phosphonium salt. And then I can treat the phosphonium salt with a strong base something like LDA will be fine, to generate the ILID as I need it. 
So then we can just check our forward synthesis is all working. We're going to start off with proton aldehyde, which is cheap and ready available, and do a diels alder reaction with butadiene. So that's just heat. That will give me the anti product here. Next step, I'm going to do my homologation. So that's first treating with the unstabilized illid, and then second treating with aqueous acid. This adds a CH2 into my molecule. So I'm just going to call this molecule aldehyde X. For my other fragment, I'm going to start with acetylene. And first, I'm going to deprotonate it. So I need a pretty strong base for this. Something like Buley would do the job, It'd be quite easy to use in the lab. Then I'm going to react it with the epoxide. So just ethylene oxide, which is also available. That will give me the one, two functionalized compound. Now that one has two acidic protons, but I do need to protect the alcohol. So now is a good time to do that. I'm going to use TBS chloride. And normally you'd use imidazole as an easy to use base here. That will protect my alcohol. That's the silyl ether. Next step, I'm going to deprotonate the other end of that alkyne. So I can just use Buley again. And for the second step, I'll add aldehyde X and that will fire the nucleophile into the carbonyl group. So after that step, I should have this. I'll just note here that there was no stereochemical control here, but I hadn't specified that in the molecule I was going to disconnect anyway. So just to finish off, I'm going to use the acid chloride and the pyridine to make the ester on the secondary alcohol. And then the final step, a hydrogenation using a Lindlar catalyst to do the partial hydrogenation of the alkyne to the cis alkene. Then there's one final thing to do before I get to my target molecule, and that's to take this silo group off. And that can quite easily be done using TBAF to get me to my product. TBAF is just a source of fluoride ions. It's this ammonium salt. Fluorine is a particularly good element to convince oxygen to break its bond to silicon. Silicon oxygen bonds being, of course, very strong. But one of the things that's even stronger is silicon fluoride. So there's a driving force for that deprotection. Right then, if you enjoyed that discussion, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. There's a few other videos on related topics just on the screen now.